Welcome back to ShiftCast. You're watching a segment of the full episode. If you want to catch the full episode, you can check it in the live tab of our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Uh, leave a rating while you're at it. Drop us, uh, drop us your rating on Spotify, but let's get right into it. Next up, we've got our uh, recurring segment, By the Dip. And just an explanation for you, this is uh, a segment where we talk about who we think are some of the best value players for fantasy. You may be thinking, fantasy? Rocket League has fantasy? What? Uh, yes, you can check it out on fanrl.com. Just a fantasy website, totally free. Just an exciting thing. You're, you're automatically placed in the Global League. If you go to the Join League section, you can find all kinds of stuff in there, different creators and organizations hosting their own fantasy leagues. So get in there, get your team. It's just another fun way to consume um, RL Esports. So check that out. We're going to give you some selections that we have made that we uh, predict to be a good value player. Do we have anyone that wants to go first? Let me go. I'll kick it off. Go for it. Yeah. I have talked about this in the past, typically as an example of a player that I think is always a good choice. Um, Aqua. Aqua has now joined NRG alongside Mist and Garrett G, and he is priced at fourteen fifty. And I'm going to tell y'all. Uh, let's see. Was it? I think it was. I think it's last season. They start to blur together. I can't remember. I think it's last season. Um, Aqua and Stizzy absolutely carried my fantasy team week in and week out. And here's why. They were on teams that just unfortunately weren't going to make top eight, but that bodes well for fantasy because they get eliminated early, which means their score will not deteriorate as the event goes on and the competition gets stiffer. So when you have a player like Aqua who's going to take on a lot of the uh, playmaking ability, the generative um, side of offense, and, and the scoring as well, he's going to do a lot of that. He's going to put up some good numbers. At, fit, at 14.50, that is an incredibly, um, incredibly great value as well. That's kind of on the low end, so you'll still be able to put some of those more um, consistent, um, confident players in, in your lineup as well. I'm going with Aqua. I think that is a home run pick at 14.50. I do not care about your <laughs> early out strategy. I know it works, but that's no fun. I want to actually have a fantasy team that I can support throughout the tournament. So my pick is apparently Jack, because mm. they're, they should be making it pretty far. And I know that first killer, that first killer is going to take a lot of points away from him, if you will. But at 1,400, apparently Jack, I think, still is a really nice pick. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he can still ball out and, and put up a, a good performance. And for 1,400, you're not expecting someone That's to right. put up 700 points in your fantasy. So you might as well try your hand. On apparently Jack. Well, and, and here's the thing too. I mean, even this season with his current roster, he's had a couple of pretty great performances regarding um, fantasy stats. So I think you're totally right. At 1400, there's really no downside for it. Belair, what yes, you got but, for us? Who do you think is uh, who do you think is a good value pick for FanRL.com? I'm following a similar sentiment to to Jens here. Uh, you okay, know, you guys heard go. it here first. Who do you think's energy is getting eliminated? At 03. That's why he picked up Aqua. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, apparently Jack and that team have a lot to prove as they get started here. You know, they had a pretty good major and they're building up. So I think that's a team who is looking to improve their results. I mean, I think Jack is still the leader there. But I'm going to go with Nali, another player who is looking to, I guess, rebound is the best term to use. Uh, not a major that he's going to be uh, telling his grandkids about. I think it was uh, pretty underwhelming from, from Nali and, and OG at that event. Um, and he's somebody who consistently has shown the ability to uh, bounce back and have big events and somebody you can't count out. Uh, so I, I see a world where, where Nali could have a pretty impactful uh, event here to get things kicked off. And at 1400, you know, you really can't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely the key with all of ours. Is we you keep that value cheap, you know, keep that uh, investment cheap, I guess. And you've got a lot of upside there. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to throw a couple more out there just because I see them and they're, and, and I think that they are uh, worthwhile to note. I think Nas and AJ, both at 14.50, are, are, are fair kind of gamble picks. Um, very similar to what Yen said earlier. Like, even if they only put up a 450, a 480, well, you didn't pay a whole lot for it anyways. But I think there's always a potential for AJ to pop off and, and, and really have a great event. Um, and I will say, personally, I kind of expect M80 to regain a bit. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. they've shown throughout Swiss stage of, of the first um, three events that they've been great, but they haven't put it together in the playoff bracket. So... I think uh, I think that team, I believe in them to kind of regain. So I think those are some worthwhile shouts as well. Um, tell us who you guys think 
Do you have fantasy? Who is your favorite player to pick on there? Who's the most consistent scorer for you? And who is your best value pick? Drop those down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Uh, Shiftcast, this was a segment of the full episode. If you want to catch the full episode, check it in the live tab of our YouTube channel, or you can check it out on Spotify. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time.